All right, I got a pen chest here, so I'm going to play my pen chest, and I'm going to try and let's try not to dink around today and get it done in eight shots. I wish they'd give you an, a bonus for hole in ones, so we'd really try and go for <laughs> really try and go for a hole in one on a shootout. On the Oasis. This is one of the holes that's going to be in the tournament. So let's play this hole a little serious. It's not a bad ball. Let's see what I could do just getting up there. I think in this bag I've got a sniper. I really need to get just about a mile per hour more ahead. <clears throat> it's a little over. I got about three quarters of a ring of power. Seven hundred rings great to the right. That one's fine. That one's fine. Now it's all about if I got too much. <laughs> that's about as far forward as you can get. And that's about as far forward as you can get in Ricky. So you got exactly the same shot from here that you'd have from Ricky. The extra mile eight, you'd probably have to put, if the wind was like that, you'd have to put a little bit of overpower on it. But you want to try and use that wind, gauge that wind. So when I'm pushing up against the red line there, until I can get to the right spot, that's giving me information. If I'm two and a half rings off, that's five miles per hour wind. So... Maybe I can use some of that wind. I can take the side wind out, put the headwind back in. And it'll tell me, it'll give me an indication of how much overpower I need to use. I try not to go at them with max overpower if I can help it. Some shots, you just, some shots, the only way to go at it is with max overpower. So this is the same exact shot you'd have in Ricky. I'm not even sure your shot would be this good, Ricky. Maybe. It's 2 4. I'm just going to do a regular wind adjustment and get my grid up. Two four. I think it's going to go long. Hitting it perfect. We're going to get to see right here <clears throat> whether it goes long or if it, uh, if the ball guides true, but if it seems like it was going to go long <laughs> and just a little bit inside, that's not a bad place to be for a putt on this shot on this hole though, because it's going straight uphill. I don't care whether my opponents like it or not. Any of the holes that we get that are tournament holes, I'll bring out a big ball. I'll bring out one of the mortal balls, like a king of balls or a kingmaker, katana. I'll bring out I'll bring out whatever's appropriate for that hole. But if we're on the non-tournament holes, I'll play all the non-tournament holes with the Marlin. <laughs> And I'm trying to win as many as I can out on the course. So if we can get eight in, I want to win four of them out on the course. That's the goal. And two of the shootouts. So if I can get six out of eight, I'm all right. <clears throat> Still got some work to do. I barely got it in. <laughs> My opponent's got a super makeable pitch from right here. So depends on which club they bring out. They got a rapier, so they got the right club for the job. This is the deal is most of the time that you use your wedge, you're in this kind of range. And you can get that rapier so accurate when you put that top spin on there and move it back.
I've seen people make complaints about the rapier and, and advise people not to start off on a different surface. So like don't start off on the fringe and then bounce onto the green, start off on the green. Well, I normally would agree with that statement. You can start off on a different transitional surface as long, but the deal is, is that you, you have to account for wind. So you still have, you pull it back closer like that. So you think you don't have to account for wind, but you've got to account for wind. And that's why a lot of times you're just a little off. I'm trying to get the top spin or the back spin right on this. It's real fine. Three one. I'm gonna do a ten percent pull, so I'm gonna go three three. Three three. I gotta snap it. Hitting it perfect. I can't believe I got that off. <laughs> wow, look how close that was. I was way off. I'm trying to get I'm trying to figure that shot out. I'm just trying to, to shoot that shot. And not make any weird adjustments or do anything on it and try and re relearn how to go at it from the right. But that was way close to an epic fail. This will definitely be one of the uh, two that I lose. I think everybody, at least if, I don't know how, how the average person out there plays, but I think everybody that listens to the channel is going to have a pretty good tournament. It's always, it's always disappointing when we have these kind of tournaments and you play all week long and you, then you get in the tournament. Don't try so hard when you get in the tournament. Just go out there and play in the tournament and try and get minimum score. And just try and put yourself in the right spot and, and play for minimum score, but try and put yourself in the right second spot. And it becomes a lot easier because you're not going out there like trying to do something different. You're just going out there to try and get the minimum score, but you're but you're going to get to the second shot and you're going to look up and go, wow, this would be the perfect spot. And wow, it would really be nice if I had this ball. And wow, it would really be nice if I had that club. And you look up and bam, you've got, you're in the right spot. You got the right club. You got the right ball and you go, wow, I wish I knew my adjustments. You look down on your piece of paper and for that hole and it says, hey man, this is you're in your sniper and you're going to use do max adjustment. You're going to add on 10%. It's like, wow, that kind of fell all together. It does fall together if you actually have, if you actually know how to do the minimum score thing. So there's certain spots you can't get to with a Marlin, but if you bring out a little bit bigger ball, it's not about trying to do some spectacular thing. It's just trying to get to a different spot. A bigger ball can get me way down here to the end. And a lower ball can do the same thing. It's the second shot that's the deal. So on this hole, if you've got a Guardian and you've got a Marlin, <clears throat> you might be able to get up there and do the rough bump. The only bag I have a guardian in is in my apocalypse bag. So let's see if I can get it done with an apocalypse. Because if I can get way up there with my apocalypse, I can I I may have a shot with that guardian. I don't play with that apocalypse very often, so let's play with it in practice. Oh my gosh! Let's switch to a Marlin ball. This is gonna be ugly. Ugly. I even get over. Maybe. Just barely. It's going to clip it. That's all right. I'll still take a guardian. There's five. There's six, seven, seven, two. About two rings great to the right. See if I can clip it. I may I may be able to clip and bounce over it. Ah, just barely missed it. 
That's all right. This shot right here, if you're back farther, is easier to do with a sniper because I may have to bounce off the island. And the Guardian only has like, if it's maxed out, it has like three and a half. I think it gets a little bit more when it gets to level nine. That's the whole goal about getting it to level nine. I still think it's less than 40, but it's, it's more than 3.1. So we have to switch. This is where a lot of players, especially newer players, when they come out to these holes, they know how to play it one way and they only play it that way. And if the wind isn't favorable, they they it's the shot gets jacked up and they, they don't have any other way to go at it. So you can look at the environment or look at where you're at and go, okay, hey, I, I didn't get to where I wanted, so I'll switch to this other shot. So let's see if I can get that done. <laughs> sure. This is not a, not that prime spot to be in right here. This thing's got a huge backboard on it. So as long as I can hit that rough, I'm good to go. Which room I got forward? Damn, I don't have any room. Let me give myself a little bit of room. There's six. Seven, two. Yeah, man, I'm way up there. Let's see if I can just stick it over to the other side. I should have put some curl on it. I did. I should have put some curl on it. What was I thinking? Sitting here chilling out, having a cigarette, thinking about going to bed. Hanging out at the house because of the coronavirus. In the hole. Now I put some pressure on me, so I open the door by ending up in the rough. And you can never end up in the rough. I should say never, but on a hole like this, you don't want to ever end up in the rough. Right. I'm not going to hit it two rings great to the great and get it in. And it would have been a little short. One of the things I like about that Nirvana is, is that you can run the top spin out. Good game. Good game. You can run the top spin out and you can use it like a, uh, like a rapier where you can you can get it more accurate and get it closer to you but you can only do that if you're switching transitional surfaces you don't want to do all of that top spin on the green because it, the ball guides lying it'll go a thousand miles you need to hit a transitional surface and it'll slow it down and then it'll run exactly like the ball guides telling you it will Try it sometime. Get on a green with your Nirvana and run out all the topspin and try it on the green and it'll run past it about five yards. Next time you're playing a buddy and you're and you're missing a shot. And you can practice that and see how it runs out. This is not a tournament hole. And I'm telling you that that shot going straight forward is an optical illusion <laughs> so get on it buddy i mean this is like there's one of the holes in here i think it's hole number nine in oasis and <clears throat> that hole everybody's looking to the left and that's an optical illusion everybody's looking to the right here that thing is very enticing but the second shot blows And especially blows if you're way back there. I'm gonna take my accurate bag.
the Marlin. Need to have a need to have a really good accurate bag. All right, I'm trying. I'm gonna have to practice with my Hornet and remember its new numbers. Maybe I can. And it's this isn't gonna be the hole to get it on. Put a little bit of backspin just to stop it up there at the top. Six five. I need to put my grid on. I keep saying that and I keep forgetting to do it. There's five six five. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Hitting it perfect. Just floating it up there to the top. And that's, if we played this in rookie, if we were playing this in rookie, that's the same exact spot that you would get to with very little effort. You could get up there to the top in tournament, you would bring a bigger ball. And so the first time you come here, you'd want to be real conservative and then you could eke that top spin up so that you knew because there's a crest up there. If you get over the top of it, it'll roll off. So it takes one or two times and then you write it down on there one top spin or two top spin. <laughs> and that's the number. You don't go beyond that number and be real conservative on that number. It's better to be conservative and in the fairway than to take a risk and one out of five be in the rough. And then you'll have a very consistent shot up to the green. But you have to figure out what that is for the whatever club you have in your bag. So it takes, this is like coming out here and taking a few practice shots. And Ricky, we can get a little bit closer. So that means there we could get a little bit closer too. So the deal is, is that since we're playing one-on-one, -on -one, I don't have the real good shot. I'm just going to get on the green. I want to come at it from the top. I want to stay as far away from that sand as possible. There's five, six, seven, eight, six. Right back to the red line. So I'm going to put a little bit of power and a little teeny bit of right hand curl. <clears throat> and just try and get it up there towards the top of the green. On a fringe. Perfect. And let my opponent make his shot. <laughs> let my opponent set themselves up. Let's see what they can get done. I suppose if you could get farther forward from where my opponent is, and you had a club that had a lot of topspin, you might be able to do a rough bump right there. But there's a mogul right in front of where that rough bump is, and that mogul might in impact on how <clears throat> how that rough bump, because that rough bump would have to go right through that mogul in order to get to the cup. I think I took that shot. I've taken that shot in the past with a guardian. Like I worked my way up there with a guardian in my bag so that I could see what it was. And you can get over to the other side and try and backspin it to the cup. This is a hole you can get an eagle on the way that I'm playing if you bring out a bigger ball. You got options when you when you bring out a bigger a bigger ball. So one-on-one, -on -one, there's just like a way to play it so that you can get the minimum score every time. And roll. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Top shelf, Clannabis. There you go. All right. We got a player. That's what I'm talking about. I introduced them to the channel, and here they are. They wanted to replay. See? I'm one with the force to forces with me. <laughs> the crowd goes wild. I'm going to take my accurate bag. All right, 
there's five, six, seven, eight, and then do a little more. Because I'm going to put some curl on it. Getting it perfect. And just trying to bleed it over there to the other side, see how far I can get if I can miss that rough. <laughs> Try and straighten that shot out as much as possible. I don't think you can get up there and do the rough up from this side. Maybe if you get in the right spot, you'd get the right angle at it that you could do a rough bump without having to do any side spin and try and do the rough bump so you're just bleeding it right up to the cup. In tournament play in Ricky, we would hit over to this pad right here and try and get up in this, and you're in your short iron. You're in your minimum short iron. Anytime you can get minimum short iron, you're, you're in a great spot. <laughs> All you have to do is hit it perfect. <laughs> the last time this was in a tournament, I did not hit a perfect. I don't think I hit a perfect all week. That's the weekend I didn't make the weekend round. <laughs> if you hit from over here, you have a long iron shot straight in. And it's a pretty decent long iron shot. <clears throat> and you can do the rough bump from over there with that long iron. But my red line's too far back, so I have to do the bounce over. I was hoping if I got all the way up in there, if I had a bigger ball right here, I would. There's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just gonna do a full ring pull. Hitting it perfect. Right where I aimed it. I moved it over a little because it was against that head. I put that little teeny bit of side spin on there right at the end because I was going against that headwind. I'm not really too concerned. I'm I'm more concerned that my distance was perfect right there. Because distance is the key. I don't know all of the I don't know all of the adjustments. I don't remember all of the adjustments on these holes. So that's why when I'm playing one on one, I'm I I go for the greens where everything's preferable. I go for them every time and do the go through the motions. I'm never too concerned when I don't get when I don't pick that up. Sometimes all of the everything's in your favor, the wind's going right. But when it's not, the whole goal when you're playing one-on-one -on -one is to get up there and force your opponent to get up there. On the fairway. <laughs> Dude, I didn't set your shot up, man. You got an easy shot from there. If I don't miss the putt. I like taking those little gimmies down at the bottom, though. <laughs> I will tell you that. It's much easier to take those little gimmies than it is to have to make an actual putt. Go into a shootout. Hopefully get one of the good shootouts. Something we can uh, really go at. One of the ones that's in the tournament. <clears throat> the deal on the fish hole is, is you're going to have to come there with specific stuff. So you need backspin. So if you got upper developed clubs, it looked like from the pro tees, you're playing it. If you want to do that rough bump, you're playing it with a rock. And ball guide is really important, and I'm not sure how much it has. So you're gonna play need to play with a a driver that has a lot of backspin. And so I'm not sure if we can get really good practice on it because I we always land there with the wrong stuff. Six seven. I am not hitting a headwind against on that rough. I'm 
put a little tops in just because I'm going against the headwind. There's five. There's six, seven. Right back to the red line. No, I had so much lag right there. I'm surprised I hit it great. So let's hope I got my distance right. And I didn't. <laughs> that's a losing, that's a losing shot. See if my opponent can get it within that. They got a little bit less when they got a katana. I like katanas. They're a great ball. When you're playing one on one, if you're playing like a T8, a katana is probably about as big as I would bring out. What's funny though is, is that when you play T8, T9, and you go down. You have a tendency to forget that you can actually play with a marlin. And so you almost forget how to play with a marlin. If you went up and you stayed with the lower balls and you tried to learn how to play like T8 with just like power one balls, you stepped up the power. And only occasionally lift it up to a katana and then set the limit like you'd never go higher than a katana unless you were practicing a tournament hall. You'd be amazed at what how much better you'll play the game if you learn how to play the game with, with a lower level ball. Because with a lower level ball, you've got to be in an area and you're like, why, why take a risk? <laughs> when I can get out to that area right there and I know from that area I can make it up. This hole right here is a little bit more difficult, especially with a headwind. Unless you bring out a bigger ball. Because with a smaller ball, you have to use overpower. So my opponent's using a katana. I'm going to use a katana. My opponent would have an advantage if I went first. Because I would have tried to figure out how to do it with a marlin. But it is much easier with a katana. And I'm going to bring my number one bag. I want as much raw distance as I have. Two eight. I'm going to say about a ring and a half. It's actually a little less. That puts me about a half a ring into power. So I'm going to rub up against the nubs and put just a little bit of power back into it. Isn't it perfect? Let's see if we can just float it down there without overshooting it. See if we can match up with our opponent. Put the, the best pressure you can put on your opponent is to end up in the fairway. <laughs> There's a rough bump that you can do on this shot, on this hole, if you can get up there far enough. But I'm not sure I can get up there with my with a sniper. I may have needed a guardian to get up there. And that wind right there is pretty conducive for the wind pull because it's running, it's running about diagonal with this. It's running the same plane as that rough. So if you make a bad adjustment to the left or the right, if you could make it over there, this is a great win for the rough bump. I can't make it over. So the whole goal here, the whole goal on this 
is to get up on the green. That's about what it's going to take to get on the green. As long as I'm three rings off, I can just run it up to it. A seven. There's five. Six, seven. Hit it. One ring great to the left. Just run it over there. <laughs> I'm never going to, I'm not shooting. If I can't stay three rings off, if I move that thing over and I couldn't get to where I could line it up and I was, I just put a little bit of curl on it. I'm not interested when I'm playing one-on-one -on -one and taking any risks. It's just get on the green. I make enough mistakes just like doing stupid stuff, <laughs> making a bad wind adjustment that just get up on the green, get up there, make a putt, make a chip. My opponent's farther away than me, so they have a they have a tougher shot. They have a shot that they can miss. And I have a shot that I can make. <laughs> And my whole goal is not to have to go to a shootout with you. I don't mind shootouts, but I want to beat you right here and right now. <clears throat> Perfect. In the cup. Wish we get more of the tournament holes. For those of you that are playing pro this week, or if you're moving up to pro, this is going to be a really good tournament. I know Hammer and Hank does pro stuff, and he'll do notes. I, I asked Hammer and Hank to send me his notes one time. And his notes, I, I read the notes for hole number one on how to set up, how to set up the, uh, the adjustment to get a hole in one on hole number one, or get, the, get whatever it was to get the ball in the hole. So the notes were like, pull out your Goliath and be like in this spot right here at plus two and your ball guide three squares to the left and two squares forward. And it was, it was in gibberish, but he definitely has those adjustments. So if you watch his stream and watch how he sets those shots up and where he goes, he'll walk through it as he progresses throughout the week and he'll get you in the hole. Those are tight numbers, especially if you use the app. So if you're playing pro, that's definitely the numbers. He has numbers just like that for a rookie. I work those numbers out throughout the week. My whole thing is, my whole thing is, is that you guys will be, you guys will be good if you take all of the stuff that's in the community and you, you weigh it, but then you go out there and you actually put it to the test with your game because you may find for whatever reason on some hole that if you hit it this way, that's the way. Fuck you guys. <laughs> I'm not changing. Like that's the, that's it for me. That's what I'm doing. And so hopefully, hopefully by watching my stuff, you guys are like learning how to actually when you're off a little bit and you're consistently off a little bit, you got to make some kind of change. Or you're off. You're just always going to be off a little bit, but don't be practicing that stuff in one-on-one. -on -one. You can, you can practice setting up your wind stuff, but the wind is so variable and we get so much weird headwind in one-on-one, -on -one, especially during the tournament week. I think my dog just woke up. He did. I'll show you what this shot over here looks like. Let me get my stylus out so I don't have to be a barbarian and use my fingertips. It's that old, there's some old axiom for knife fighting. Some like Mushashi thing. It's two, four, six, eight. 
I'm just going to lay it up out there. Come on, buddy. Come on, Buster. What are you doing? Yes. Did you think you were all alone? You're on video, buddy. What do you think? I think our opponent's coming at it from Route A. You can see this shot right here. I, uh, I posted a walkthrough and I had this shot on it. And though, watch, watch how my, the opponent's ball moves and, and really pay attention from this direction because the ball doesn't respond like the course down there is sloped or there's some something going on on that that hole it's sloped like it's there's a slope right here that's coming down it doesn't re it doesn't respond well like when you try and run it up there it doesn't respond very well at all 2.5 let me try the rough bump so I'm in max sniper See where I can see what the heck I'm doing. Where I can see the ball, the ball guide. Two five. Man, I know there's a wind adjustment down here. There's two five. All right, let's keep our fingers crossed and let's see. Let's see how far off we are. Hitting it perfect, so we'll get a good read right here. <laughs> And I needed to push it back probably. It's at least a 20% wind adjustment because you can see how much it was, how far it was, where it almost ended up in the sand. So there's at least a 20% wind adjustment to counteract that because I started off about dead center in the middle of that rough area and I hit almost on the back edge of it. So it's got to be at least a 20% wind adjustment. That would have been half a ring. Getting it perfect. That would have been good dunking range right there. What was I thinking? Hey, buddy. You go get busy on your pad. You go get on your pad. Good boy. It's a draw. All right, let's see if we can get some action here. Going to a shootout, getting the fish hole. And I don't know if we can do this hole. We are there with our sniper. I know it's max backspin. I don't even know if max backspin's enough. Yes, it is. Yeah, not quite enough. I'm going to do a 40% wind adjustment. 30. That'd be 3, 4, 2. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 2. Hitting it perfect. Let's see if that was too much. Just perfect in the hole. Woo! That's what I'm talking about right there. <laughs> and that was a 40% wind adjustment. I the last video I shot I that I put in the playlist I had a 20% on there, but I could have swore I went back and looked at some other notes, and my notes said that I the number I'd worked out for wind adjustment there was 40%. And I tried 20. I got on this hole once be once before and got a 20. And I did 20 and it, it didn't, it didn't work out. I ended up short. So I was doing a 40% wind adjustment at max club, regardless of where I was in my club, but I was at max club. And that only works if you have a tailwind, if you have a headwind here, it's a different story. <laughs> it's a different story. You have to work that out because some of these Oasis holes, the wind works different if you're hitting in the headwind and like, if you were hitting any shot, sidewind, tailwind, any shot, you would just do a normal shot. But if you're hitting against headwind, you'd add on like 30 or 40%.
And then if you're on a hole like this where you're already adding on 40%, then that means that like if you're hitting against headwind, you need to add on <laughs> like 80%. And my opponent got discouraged because of the hole in one and they uh, timed out. So they put a damper on our party. <laughs> Did not want anything to do with that. All right, I got two more on my pin chest, so I'll better open up to, I want to leave spots for them. I think I've, I had to have lost two already. Maybe. I don't know where I'm at, so I gotta win the last two in order to at least ensure that I I think I've lost at least at least two. I think I played one and I didn't get a chest because I was already full. What do we got here? Oh yeah, I love this hole. <laughs> and I'm gonna let's see if I can get it done with a katana. If I can, I'm gonna leave it on because then I won't be uh, too big a d bag. Seven two, it's two four six eight. There's seven. It's seven four something. No overpower. Max curl. Ain't it perfect? Let's see if I can clip that rough. Oh, too bad. Oh, got too much distance on it and didn't clip the rough. You gotta clip the rough to make that happen. But if I can get over to that first fairway pad on the other side with that Spitfire, cause I'm way up in the front, if I can get myself on the, if I can hit the fairway in a max overpower, I'll have a max overpower hook shot that I can do out there. <clears throat> I have no idea where the spot is, but if I can get onto a fairway pad with that Spitfire, I have a shot. Otherwise I'll have to lay up to the left. And my opponent just assured me that he will have at the at the best that it'll take him three to get on. So most people play out to that side. Let's see if I can get over here. Oh, I can. I think I can just bounce over there. Seven six two four six eight. How much curl do I got? Had it like two rings. Ah, oh, that was three rings to the left or to the right. Not quite enough. Not quite enough curl. Sand from the sand to the sand, but my opponent can't get on. So the deal is, is you have no, there's no risk for going for it. I should have did the hook. What was I thinking? I was trying to be conservative to see if I could recover without getting crazy. There's so much water out there. That's what I was thinking, <laughs> to be honest with you. Almost everybody I play, everybody I play goes to the left on that drive. And I make that shot out there on that island pretty consistently. Six, seven from this distance. Not on a two ring great to the left or to the right. Perfect. Perfect. Damn it. 
I let my opponent into the into the into the locker room. What the shit? They're gonna use a thorn. That's because the thorn doesn't have very much topspin, and I don't think they can do the rough bump. That's why if you have a claw in your bag, when you have upper developed clubs, I'll tell you right now, there's a if you if you're playing in one-on-one -on -one in this tour right here in your utility bag, you need to play with like if your hornet or your thorn aren't exactly where you want or you're not getting what you want, doesn't have enough backspin on the hornet. It's great for tournament play, but it, it doesn't help you out when you're in one on one. Or if your thorn is like it's at that point where it's a one trick pony, it's got backspin. It's got a few other tricks up its sleeve, but not much. I would play with a with a claw because a claw, you can do anything with a claw. You can rough bump. Okay, you want me to rough bump and I need topspin? Oh, you need me to rough bump and I need backspin? You need just backspin? You need topspin? It doesn't matter. You need curl? That club has everything. And it has pretty decent accuracy. When it gets upper developed, it has really, I mean, it has really good accuracy. It hangs out around two for a long time, but two's not that bad a number. When it gets maxed out, it gets to like 1.5. All right, if the wind is blowing right, we'll do a rough bump. If the wind is not blowing right, the wind's blowing all right. I think there's like a 10% wind adjustment here. If we can reach it. Let's see if my opponent can get up there. Putts. Let's check out putts. 3,717 games, 104 million won. Not bad. That's about 3,700. That'd be six. That'd be 7,400. That'd be 260 million. 7,400. That was nice. Very nice shot. Well played. 174. Let's see if we can get inside that. Uh, I'm going to have to play the, I'm going to have to play it the same way. Two seven. Let me go two nine. Let me go two eight and split the difference. Isn't it perfect? We'll see. We'll see if I can beat that 174. Not likely. Too fast. Right there, I would have beat it. But right there, I lost. Ooh, just the bit inside. I keep getting my distance a little wrong on this. I keep thinking it needs to be more like I like it needs to be all the way up to it, but it needs to be a little short of the flagpole. It runs up to it. Hit the rematch. Come on. I think I only have one more. Do I have time for one more? I do have time for one more. Let's see if we can get it in here. If the video stops all of a sudden at the end, thanks for watching. <laughs> let's open that up. Let's go in there and just wipe. Let's just knock them out right here on the course. And then you guys can put a comment in there on how many I won. If I won six out of eight, that's the goal. That way you can open up six, that way you get six chests. I know I had a platinum and a gold starting off and I don't think I have another gold, so I haven't won. All right, we've got a hole here from the tournament. I wanna see if we can do the shot from the back tees on the right-hand side to get up to that shadow, because if you, that's the spot. And this is a pretty decent wind right here because the wind's kind of neutral. It can push us off, but uh, I'm going to bring out a big ball and I don't care what my opponent thinks. <laughs> and my opponent's going to uh, have a rough time from there. Let's bring out the king of balls. See what we can get it done with the king. 
see if we can do the bounce to debounce and get it over there into that spot. That's four. That's about two rings. Let me go just a little teeny bit more. Then I'll put a little teeny bit of curl on it and see if I can rough bump it. I don't have any room for error here. Isn't it perfect? I just want to see what that looks like. I'm not, and I'm not sure if I don't get the distance wrong there. That was going to clip the rough, but that's about. You want to get up to that shadow. The closer, the farther up there you can get, the more you can get into your short iron. But if you do a second bounce rough bump right there, you can get pretty damn close. You might be able. I'm not sure what a big topper would be because you lose a lot of raw distance with a big topper. Not sure which club I'll be in here. I might be on my short iron. This might be the very first time I've taken a short iron shot since I got my Hornet upgraded. This will be the first time I've taken a 100% accurate short iron to a... Look at that. I am on my short iron. There's there's max right there. So I'm at, I am at max. I'm at 100%. And get that top spin lined up on it. It's a 100% accurate club at this level. So there's five, six, eight. Isn't that perfect? This wind's not conducive with trying to get it into the hole when you're doing a pure, <laughs> pure side wind like that. But that's definitely the spot. That's definitely the spot right there. So once we know what the tournament wind is, we can work that number. We can start working like what you need for top spin and what you need for where you need to be, what your wind adjustment is. But that's definitely the, the landing area for your drive. It's the first time I played this hole in a long time, trying to, trying to do it from those tees. But that's definitely a way to get over there where you don't have to take those there's there's becoming a lot more holes where we're doing second bounce rough bumps and we can bleed off into an area and it'll put you into one of your clubs if you can get past that though that was max so if you can get on the other side of that shadow you're in minimum short iron my opponent does not like that shot so i keep getting people that forfeit by Debagging off and closing up their device. I've never really had a lot of people. I mean, I've had some people give me frowny faces and I read a lot of stuff in, in, the, in the community about people upset about people forfeiting. And I'm usually really good about forfeiting. But in one-on-one -on -one play, I, don't, I never forfeit. <laughs> I mean, every single shot is a practice shot. All right, I got a gold chest there, so I got a bonus. Bonus gold chest and a pin. Let's see what I got in my pin chest. Nothing? Something? I don't even know. Let's see what I got. Let's see what the next club is I'm working on. I've got a few minutes here on my video. I got maybe a couple minutes if it ends early. Thanks for watching. My grizzly is like forever and gone. And I'm not sure like what it gets when it gets to it's a little bit more power. It gets a little bit more top spin and a little bit more back spin. I don't think it gets any ball guide. My rapier just got there, so it's got forever. My Nirvana just got there, it's got forever. So, and they don't get anything measurable. They don't get anything worth trying to get them in a hurry about. Neither does the rock. The Hornet's building now. Big Topper is definitely worth getting to, to level seven, and I'm putting putting points in it every single time I get the big topper I'm putting three into it because when you get it to level seven
it goes to 225 yards. It picks up six yards in power. When while that doesn't get you to the extra anything over the 130 range when you're in that group, rocket, the rock, the apocalypse, and the extra mile when you get into that, but at, that's a huge boost. <laughs> And it gets it gets some other stuff too. I think it gets ball guide, and it's already got some of its accuracy. It might go up. It might get some accuracy too. It gets a big boost at, at level seven, big boost. And I've got most of those just from playing in in rookie tournaments. So there are some of these rookie clubs that people poo pooed off that they with these epics that you get a lot of cards for because there's not very many you get a lot of cards for the the jungleist because there's not very many epics from t3 down so what do we got one two three four five six seven eight so we got eight so we have we we got a selection down here and they made some of these clubs so they're really good when they get upper developed this this Grim Reaper, which I never thought would ever be a club that I would include in a bag, is now an extremely usable club. It's got a 100 backspin at level 6. And when it gets up to level 7 and gets some of that top spin, it gets more accurate as well. This actually becomes a pretty... I would definitely switch this out on any hole where I needed, needed backspin. And there's a few of them in the game because I'd rather come with 100 than my Saturn's 92. The B-52, I've never really played with my B-52 because I I played, there was a tournament here not too long ago, and I think in my low-level account, I played with a B-52 that was like level two just because of the distance. I couldn't get into my long iron range without, it was either this or the Goliath. And the Goliath didn't have, didn't have what I was looking for in that level. What's the shame is, is that my Goliath is maxed out and I never use it. I just never went that route. A lot of people.